and welcome to Here We Crow. We're back. We're back. We're back. <laughs> Look, apologies <laughs> for our tardiness, people. We know we've left you hanging a little bit. It's been a crazy few weeks, mm-hmm. but we are back. And we are at a very new venue for us. We, we are. are here at the Torrens Arms Hotel in the Loft. Yes, we are. That sounds fancy as hell. It does sound fancy. It is pretty fancy, let's yep. be real. And Taylor Swift joins us, yeah. weirdly. Yeah. She's not speaking. Uh, <laughs> We've she was replaced going to our cardboard cutouts of Darren Jarm and Tony Lodger <laughs> and Jason Paul <laughs> Pleasure with their cardboard cutout of Taylor Swift yeah. that scared Taylor. the shit out of Lauren yeah. as we walked up here. And keeps scaring me every time I turn around. Yeah, I keep looking at her like she's going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, she no. won't be speaking because we will have to pay her a lot of money. We get cold beer glasses here. Yeah, isn't that nice? I know. And they're That's what a clean. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. Compared to my house. Anyway, yeah. I should welcome my co-hosts. Uh, Sam, welcome. Hello, Lauren. Dan. Hello. Welcome, Ben. Hey, Lauren. How are we? It's been a while, guys. It's been a while since we all sat around together. I don't know. This time we've got wedges and chips and, and chicken. Fried chicken. This is like this is deluxe. Yeah, it is. What have bit. we been doing? We've I don't know. I plebs. should have asked Jake ages ago. <laughs> shouldn't I? Really? Have you <laughs> bought the crunchy bars? For oh, I didn't. No, oh. maybe they need to stay here too because yeah. I haven't eaten them at home. Oh, yeah, so, so we've come to a much more professional location, and now we're eating while we record. Yeah. So <laughs> so <laughs> so enjoy <laughs> the chumping. <laughs> become a lot less professional. Yeah. That's if you true. like ASMR, this yeah. is the podcast for you. It is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Episode 76. We've come a long way, baby. Ben, give us some stats, please. All right. So we've got a few. 76 was reasonably fertile ground. So our debut player, number 76. Is that no, a grass pun? No, no. <laughs> um, no, none other than Ashley Fernie. Okay. I don't know that name at all. So is that a, is that a grass pun as well? <laughs> no. <laughs> so... <laughs> Very so little shit. of this is going to be grass puns, Dan. So, uh, he was 1996 to 1996. <laughs> he played two games, had two kicks, two handballs and two tackles. Sounds yep. like an episode two stat, to be honest. Well, so he only had one in each or two in each? I didn't break down <laughs> what he got in each game, <laughs> but... Okay. Over his two games, that's what he amassed. Wow. And okay. what number games and he for did some it? reason, they, the Crows didn't stick by him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I didn't write down what number he was. Yeah, it wasn't so two, obviously. No, I would have looked at that. Um, anyway, so moving on from Ashley, unless, you know, any memories from you guys? No. None whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> Except I watched a video last night where some a little kid spelt the name Ashley as a- A-S-H-O-L-E, Ashley, which looked like... <laughs> Asshole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> continue. All right, good. Um, <laughs> 76 now. Um, oh not, no. uh, I feel like the, the wind is out of my sail a bit with this <laughs> one. Um, 76 goals for Tex this year. Yeah. Huge. Bloody Jake um, ruined that one for everybody. <laughs> It's almost as if someone worked out that it's quite quick to find these stats. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and already told you guys. Um, but what he didn't mention was 76 goals for New Church in the SANFL. Oh. Mm. And we got rid of him. Yeah. Yeah, we're definitely hearing that chip munch on the, <laughs> on the take. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, was that um, 76 in total? Yeah. Or for this year? Yeah, I was going to say. Se- no, not this year. He would no, have, he'd still be on our list. Yeah. So. Now we can't hear you at all. Yeah, sorry. I'm all <laughs> over the shop here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chew away from the mic, talk into the <laughs> Yeah, I know. Now, if we could just have a little bit of respect for the stats segment. That yeah, sorry. Great. Yes. Um, sorry, Benjamin. Uh, 76 games for Petrenko. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So it's cool. not bad. <coughs> Moving on. Well, no, well, his most famous game was against North Melbourne, who That's we true. played on the weekend. Mm. Thank you, Ben. That's, That's reasonably relevant. Jeez. Uh, and we have won a couple of games by 76. In 2008, we beat Melbourne. With a couple of fan favourites kicking goals there, we had Brett Burton kicking five. Mm. <laughs> Birdman. <laughs> and closely followed by Tippett kicking four. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you went. I Love see those blokes. Mm. Yeah. Legends. Yeah. And Absolutely. our other 76-point win was in 2017 against Richmond, just not in the important game. No. <sighs> Yuck. Yeah, terrible. Not Is fun. that it? That's it. Oh, I can look for some more if you like. No, I'm, we're I'm good. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I, I have featured him in the past, but I'm pretty sure McLeod was a 1976 baby. Oh, oh. there you go. 
Yeah, right. Very good, Ben. Thanks. Yeah, well done, Ben. Well, tonight um, we will be talking about the AFLW win against North Melbourne this weekend, which was an absolute cracker. We'll briefly discuss the Brisbane game. Briefly. But not for very long. No. Uh, we're we're going to talk some Crows and AFL goss. There's mm. a lot happening in the, the off-season AFL world. Yeah. Thankfully, not much is happening with the Crows. We're kind of flying under the radar at the moment. Mm. I like it. Let's just hope we're doing something, though. But there's reckon? obviously stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, Bargain Ben's back. Ben's backyard is back. You've mm. been waiting. It's spring. Mm. Better t- what better time for gardening? Yeah. There isn't one. One could say we're also scratching for content. <laughs> you could say that. Correct. But you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, of course You would not. not say that. No, definitely no. not. <laughs> anyway, pre-game warm-up. Music. Cool drinks. What booze has the Torrens Arms provided us tonight, Sam? The Torrens Arms has has actually delivered the goods tonight. We got these for free from uh, Nathan in the bottle shop. So Thanks shout Nathan. out to Nathan. Nathan is our Nathan. Nathan is our uh, New Zealand. Well, he was the one who bumped our New Zealand stats that time, and he's also listened to every episode back. Uh, after like what a painful know, a year time and a that must have been. Oh, for no, tell me about it. Uh, he's given You're us a strong man, Nathan. He's a very strong man. Yeah. Uh, so Pirate Life Brewing Cali Connection West Coast IPA six percent. It's uh, we've actually probably well I've already finished mine. Um, it's well I'm still going, and I just wanted to say that I asked Lauren before if it smelled like weed because mm. it has a bit of a weed smell. I don't know yeah. if that's just my sense of smell. Yeah, yeah well, it well, doesn't. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> but hop, and I would know. Hops and weed <laughs> are in a similar... Please like, educate me. Hops and weed are in like a similar thing, like species, genus, whatever. I don't know. If yeah. I fight back, you have to Yeah, go, sure you don't want to take over the backyard segment <laughs> there, Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren's going to just go... That's the try. backyard shed segment, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren's going to try some uh, hop brownies later. But, uh, Dan, like <laughs> the West Coast, West Coast beers do can taste very weedy. So it's, mm. yeah. yeah. Well, it's I like it's it. more of a yeah. piney, resiny sort of a yeah. smell to me, but yeah, yeah definitely. I'm actually enjoying it mm. for it's a pirate beer. life. I yeah, don't really like good. much pirate life beer, but it's mm. pretty good. It's always well made. It's just, I think yeah. what I don't like about pirate life is the abundance of teal at their residence. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, very if they true. could move away from that, I'd probably get around it a bit more. Yeah. That's fair. What are you guys listening to? Dan, tell me what you're listening to. Well, it, it might surprise a few people, but I've gone with some indie. Whoa. And uh, it's indie rock no from way. England. And the band's called Sorry. And the song's called Screaming in the Rain Again. And this is all I know about it. So please play it. Those famous phrases I heard. Crunching on my slaw here, so moody. It was good. I didn't remember that until the chorus, but yeah, I've heard that many times. I don't oh. know where though. Hmm. Maybe mm. it's in Not your bad. algorithm. So maybe, yeah. Hmm. What have you got, Lauren? <laughs> well, <laughs> I just have found myself not listening to any music, and I've said this multiple times on the podcast. And I'll, I've usually done a throwback, but I can't even be bothered doing that tonight. So I'm going to tell you about a podcast that I've been listening to. I have done oh, this before. You have. Um, at the moment, I'm listening to a podcast which is called Off Menu and it's with Ed Gamble oh, and James, James Acaster. Acaster. He's great. Sam knows oh, about it. <laughs> James Acaster, um, if you don't know who James Acaster is, uh, he, he was very famously on um, Celebrity uh, Bake Off mm. and failed miserably at that. <laughs> that goes around on TikTok a lot. But, um, you know, it's just two British comedians uh, interviewing lots of other different British, mostly British people, um, but they do have a lot of cool guests. Like I've listened to uh, one with Louis Theroux, one with uh, David Cross from Arrested Development. Um, who else? Catherine Ryan. I don't know. There's a bunch. Oh, Mike Skinner from The Streets. But essentially what the podcast is, is they are interviewing people and talking about their, you know, what their favourite meal would be, what like their, their dream, dream menu dinner. is. Yeah. Um, so they oh, they start off with Papa Dums or bread, Papa Dums or bread. <laughs> what would you prefer as a starter, Papa Dums or bread, Sam? Uh, definitely bread. Bread. Yeah. Uh, Dan, Papa, Papa Dums or bread. Papa Dums. Ben, Papa Dums or bread. Bread. 
Gabe's okay, checking. I'd go puppet arms. Uh, but anyway, it is a good time, good it listen, is. and it's it's just really nice to hear I people talking about their fav- favourite dishes. Yeah, I think that said a lot about our podcast that we were halfway between po- puppet arms and bread. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I'll give you a little taster. I'm currently listening to uh, episode 198, and it actually features Graham Coxon from the band Blur, who I'm a big fan of. I know Ben's a big fan of, so I'm literally... In the middle of it, I'm just going to press play. I don't yeah. even know what I'm up just, to. Just to make life happier mm-hmm. for everybody who, who who comes into contact with me. <laughs> and uh, Does your partner have a, speci- a special dish, a speciality that you really look forward to? Unless it's on your menu, don't re- don't reveal it in advance. She might kill me. No, no, it's not on. Um, yeah. There's some really good um, hal- halloumi business. Mm-hmm. Halloumi business? Yeah, there's some good halloumi business. Um, there's a good kofta every na- as well. Oh, nice! Ooh. So sort of like oh, no, a lot of Middle Eastern know. Turkish cooking. Yeah. What else? I'm a bit nervous because I'm not sure she'll really, really appreciate me. She's gonna. Do, we, we should listen to it, this and then be annoyed you've given away. Anyway, obviously recipes. English people talking. That's yeah. a lot of what it is. But it's I all mean, about food, and I love food. Really so. got a kick out of him saying the word kofta. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow funny. James A. Castor is uh, a very funny comedian that hasn't quite maybe hit the big time um, in general, right. probably in Australia. I but saw him on Taskmaster. He was yeah, really good on that. Yeah, yeah, but his stand-ups, he did a stand-up special where um, it was like over three nights, three different um, three different sort of gigs, I guess, and they were hilarious. Very, very much worth watching. Well, I, de- I definitely recommend checking out the podcast, especially if you flick through and find some um, interviewees that you like. It's, it's worth a listen and it's funny. It is. Now, That's just it? just out of order. Um, oh. oh God! Wait, what? What's that? Just a just a quick good. Um, Dan, let me have the last bit of uh, fried chicken. So I appreciate. We're not even oh, doing goods you. right now. Ben. Haven't started we're yet. We're not even in that segment. Oh, that's why I said out of order. <laughs> you're welcome, Ben. You're welcome. You could have just waited. We're always about to do I it. I would have well and truly forgotten about the fried chicken by that point. <laughs> the sentiment is appreciated. Yeah. No, so, me too, Dan. Sweet ass. All right, uh, let's talk some footy, girly girls. Won it again. Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, we'll talk about the Brisbane game, which um, we lost in a hideous display of shit umpiring. But, you know, we also could have played a little bit better. That's yeah. right. You reminded me. We, we could have played better, but the umpiring, like... <laughs> oh, was so the last bad. Few, like, um, there was some throughout the whole game, and we seem to always be crucified. But the end of that game, like, someone just cannoned into Chelbo when we were heading forward. Knocked her to the ground. No in the back free kick it was absolutely ridiculous. Like I don't, I don't know if anyone listening actually cares about decisions that happened two weeks ago. But well, that's it. I, I still care. It's it really shit me off on the day. That's yep. for sure. I was getting super frustrated, and I don't know. I feel like just consistency in the umpiring would be a good start. It would. Anyway, it's pretty clear they have an agenda sometimes, mm. I, and I know that sounds pretty one-eyed crow supporter, but. I don't feel like it's exactly the same in the men's league. Like it's definitely the SANFL team seems to get co- uh, umpired really poorly, and so does the AFLW team. So it's yeah, it's, it's baffling. Oh, I don't think you'd need to you you wouldn't need to go too far to know that the uh, the AFL probably isn't super keen on the Crows winning another premiership. I think they'd Ever. be fairly keen. It's been a while. I think <laughs> we could have one. Do you reckon? Oh, do you mean the women? The, or the men? women's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. definitely. No. Yeah. Actually, no, screw them. I actually hate the AFLW media at the moment because it's just all about Melbourne. Yeah. Mm. And oh, I, what, hang on. Give I, us a bit of credit. And I get what Sam is saying. Like, they probably don't want us to win another one, but why is it okay for Melbourne to win another one? Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, they're well, Melbourne. Because they had a seven year drought. But they won they, last year. Yeah, but that was breaking the seven year drought. What drought? Are you kidding me? And now it's important <laughs> for them to get a better dynasty than what the Adelaide dynasty was. They never will. Never. Right. Anyway, Ben, do you have any um, information on the uh, Brisbane game? Uh, very little. Um, again, yeah, it was a while ago. Um, our, seemed to be our main issue was our connection, connection connection with our forward line. So we only had a scoring efficiency of twenty seven percent going into our fifty. Ooh, so yeah, that's rough. We just that's not going to win you a game. No, no. Which yeah, we'll talk a bit later. It was not quite like that against North, but I thought overall we played pretty well against Brisbane. Other than that, it was just. The connection and obviously the 16 to 6 freeze didn't help. It definitely um, mm. has been really clear the last couple of weeks that how tight the top four is in terms of the quality of football. Like, I, I don't feel like you can really split those four teams. Um, and obviously, the North game went another step to proving that point. Yeah, Brisbane are an odd one because they beat us, but then they lose to St Kilda, who aren't that mm. great. But And they've lost to a couple of poorer teams. So. 
they're a bit. I think they're the most fragile of the four. Yeah, um, definitely. But yeah, North. Um, yeah, their their midfield particularly, and their pressure was really good. So they're right up there, and uh, the forward line for Melbourne is just um, prodigious. So. Mm. But all three of those teams, um, when we played them, have been within a goal. So um, yeah. if that says anything for the final series about to come, it's going to be tight. It's going to be epic. Mm. I'm it looking is. forward to it. Mm. It's going to be really tight. At anyway. Norwood? Uh, uh, yeah, apparently. At, l- at least two games, potentially. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yuck. Yep. Yuck. How good. Really they looking after Why don't they just have it at Feminine Oval? Because that's got even less facilities, doesn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Is Norwood, topic the, we don't know about. Is, is Norwood the biggest capacity <laughs> of, of the Sandful <laughs> ovals? There must be a reason why they, they favour that, surely. Mm. I guess so. Well, yeah. I think I think it probably is, and also they have that fancy new function centre now, so mm. they're like, let's the do wolf glass there. spot. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they don't call it a spot. The only problem <laughs> <Sure>. is about <laughs> eighty to ninety percent of the ground. I really wouldn't want to stand and watch the game from. Oh. Cause it's just a no, hot it's box. awful. No, that's it. Well, anyway, we've been bitching about that for ages. Let's talk about the North game, mm. which was way better and way more fun. <laughs> there it is. Oh, I found it. Uh, <laughs> nice win, only three three points. Uh, yeah, three points one week, three points the next. Mm. Absolute tight clinching goal mm-hmm. from Neve Kelly. Yeah. Oh my god! How good. Dan and I were talking about uh, Neve on the way here, and what an actual. Machine. Yeah. I was definitely clenching my butt cheeks during that <laughs> last quarter. <laughs> just like speaking um, of clenching, Levy just with that perfect handball off. Yeah. Uh, that and credit to Levy. Is it Levy? Yeah. Levy. 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 <laughs> Did you say it two different ways? No, Levy. You is, said is Levy. It I said Levy. Is it Levy? Levy Levy. That's Someone what she's getting called on the tell commentary. Us. Okay. Well, yeah, they, they stuff that up all the time. That's so who true. knows? That that Manyard. <laughs> Manyard. I want to call her. Levy. Wait, it is Manyard, isn't it? Yeah. It's not Manyard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Continue. Uh, a very good handball off, and that just you know she's only played two games, but that shows her footy IQ and awareness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and in and so in sync with the squad. Mm. So yeah, perfect goal from Kel- uh, Neve, and yeah, loved it. Very clean. Uh, what the zero else? free kicks in the first half. We can talk about that. Zero to eight at half time. That was pretty nice. I liked the Bronx cheers when Tia Charlton finally got a free. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ben's got more info than me because I've forgotten everything that yeah. happened. All right, come on, Ben. <laughs> All right. Um, well, it's interesting, you know, better game because we won, but I actually felt like we played better against Brisbane than we did North mm-hmm. Melbourne. So I think the game was played very much the way that North would have wanted that game to have been played. Um, it was pretty tight. Um, their pressure was able to get us into difficult situations. Being at the game... All day, it just felt like we, that was a loss coming our way, mm. which we managed not to do, which, <laughs> was, which was handy. But um, in the coal face, they seemed to consistently have a free player out the back to release to that could then get the ball forwards. We seemed to be really just a, l- a little bit scrappier when we had it and under pressure. we'd And we didn't use our first give sometimes where we could have given it away. We thought, no, nah, we can take on this player, but they stuck their tackles. So... Um, they Yeah, they brought the pressure really well and um, I think if it, the teams were reversed, we'd feel unlucky for, for losing that game. I think North um, did pretty well mm, there. Yeah. Um, if you look at like their territory, they dominated us. They were 37 to 21 inside 50s um, and Mark's inside 50. They constantly had a, a spare play to kick, yeah. short kicks Yeah, it was too. with that. Yeah. They had 13 marks inside 50. We had one. Yeah. So... And they and like you said that they had multiple options. Mm. It was like they were just kicking to like they could choose who to kick it to in the forward yeah. fifty. And and the stat that we've been dominating this year when we've played well has been our uncontested possession, which we pretty much just broke even in that. So mm. we didn't get to play our way of just you know quick transition and yeah getting in. I mean, ironically, the way we got our goals was when we were <laughs> yeah. allowed to get that quick transition, just basically yeah. kicking it over the last defender and yeah. running into goal was. Our, our best chance of kicking a goal. But, mm. but yep. yeah, it was interesting. Yeah, it felt like North dominated the game, but we were able to get our scores on the board yep. often enough to get the win. And no one will remember how gallant North were. 
Yeah, or or how two North Melbourne players could have taken a mark inside 50 <laughs> yes, and like <laughs> like ran that. into each other. Yeah. So. That was heart in the mouth type stuff. They were um, really good in the aerial contest, though, North Melbourne. Mm. That was a big thing for us. They were def- definitely defeating us in that area. Yeah, and we, yeah, we just couldn't get clean ball into our forward line other than when we could get over the back. So, mm. yeah. So it was a tough game. I, th- I feel the positive is that surely we can learn something from that game and if we come up against them again, mm. we'd have better plans or execute better so that we can play it more on our terms, not just on North's terms. Yeah. And uh, the Crows released a video of Matthew Clark um, mic'd up for the game and gave us a bit of insight into coaching on the boundary there, which um, I think everyone really enjoyed. It was kind of really nice to see uh, Doc like just... Cool, calm and collected. He's just always like that. He wasn't ruffled at all in that after that first half. Mm. Like he kind of said to him, you know, it's all right, don't stress. It's all good. Yep. And, you know, they obviously carried that into the game. A stress-free footy, I like that. Mm. Yeah. You go, girls. They're confident. Yeah. All right, well, I can't talk any more about it because, f- like I said, I forget everything. Mm. It's already too late. Yeah. It's too yeah, late it's in It's Thursday, yeah. Uh, but we should do some votes. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go Dan. Who you got for the Brisbane? Let's do the Brisbane game first. Who you got for Brisbane? For the Brisbane game, I had Neve Kelly, uh, three votes, 28 disposals. Had Noffy for two mm-hmm. with her 34 disposals and nine tackles. I just felt that Neve was a bit more flashy and a bit more effective. And I put one for Randall with 21 disposals. And while we're there, a uh, big congrats to Chelsea Randall. And MJ on the birth of their son. Tommy. Tommy. Uh, a future mother-son potential well, there. Let's hope so. Mm. First ever mother-son, maybe? Maybe. maybe. Who knows? Mm. Amazing. Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, I forgot what we were doing now. I was looking at the wedges. <laughs> ben, um, who got? Yeah, yep. So I've gone the same top two, Kelly and Marinoff, and my one went to Ponto with three goals. All right, I got Noffy for three, uh, two for Kelly, one for Chelbo. Oh, and no, I did a mixture of everyone. Did I you? Did what you got? Kelly, Marinoff, Bedell. Excellent. Mm. You keep up there, Ben. Do you want to? Not really. I tend to have to listen back. Are we going to do the votes for the other game, or are we doing s- Soldiers On and get rid of that game? Yes. Yep. Soldier on, soldier on, soldier on. Wedge dust. Whoa. <laughs> Wedge dust. Dan, who is your Sarah Allen soldiers on for the Brisbane well, Lions Sarah, game, please? My Sarah Allen soldiers on was a mixture of everyone else's votes. Uh, Chelbo. Excellent. <laughs> who was yours, Sam? Uh, Munyad. 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 Uh, I went for Daniel Ponta. Oh, uh, yeah. Ben? Randall. Excellent. All right, moving on. Votes for the other game. Crows versus North Melbourne. Dan. And Kelly, three votes. <laughs> <laughs> this is back. Eve Kelly again. <laughs> uh, 22 disposals and the match-winning goal. I just felt, again, when she got the ball, she did some Wayne Miller-style si- sidesteps and just like, she's just good to watch. She's exciting. How lucky are we to have her, really? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And West Coast could do with her right now, couldn't they? <laughs> Speaking of, mm. um, who we play this week. Uh, two, just to break up my votes from the week before for Noffy. <laughs> <laughs> 29 disposals, nine tackles. Nine tackles again. Mm. And one for Anne Hatchard, 32 disposals. Keep on being Hatchy Hatchy. Hatch on. <laughs> uh, Sam? I did the same top two again, <laughs> Kelly and Marinoff, and I gave one to Caelan Gould. Good, good. Uh, I'll do mine because Ben's typing away there. Uh, Hurry I up, gave ben. three to Neve <laughs> Kelly, two to Ebony Marinoff. I gave one to friend of the pod, Tia Charlton. Oh, nice. Ben? Uh, I was the same as Dan Kelly. Uh, Marinoff. No, it wasn't the same as Dan. No. <laughs> Marinoff. Um, I was I mean, ahhing. She'd get heaps of it, but her disposal efficiency was a bit down, 35%, but still thought it was a big game mm-hmm. when we needed her. Kelly with the game winner and Hatchard with. The lots of handballs. We should have mentioned as well that it was Noffy's um, 75th game. Oh, yeah, of course. Hasn't yes. missed a game. She Amazing. Turn equal, it on. equal third top, I think. Yep. There's three others. There's two That's others correct. that have yep. got nah, 75 Let's as well. not try to name them. No, I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. As if, <laughs> do you have any idea? No, I've got no idea. Yeah. No. Soldier on. Soldier on. Soldier on. Soldier on. 
Ben, who's your Sarah Allen celebs on for up? this week? I am. Um, on your toes. I went Stevie Lee Thompson. I thought she had some pretty important tackles in defence in that game that made a big difference. I like it. Dan? I actually went with the namesake Sarah Allen coming really? back into the team. I thought she did all right for her first game with no prior games. Guess what? So did I. Oh, and I went your one vote getter, Tia Charlton. Oh, there you go. Mm. Still on the same page, even yeah. though we haven't seen each other for weeks. I know. Look at that. How good are we? Very good. Well, uh, obviously the girls play West Coast this week. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later what in the show. What we'll talk about really quickly about that game is that the West Coast coach obviously went out in sympathy with this game <laughs> earlier. He's um, <laughs> quit being coach after whinging about playing the hard teams. He was about to come up against Crows <laughs> and decided <laughs> a week ago that it. he'll bounce. Yes, yeah, so he's gone. Um, so who knows what's going to happen. Well, I'm assuming they've got now. an interim coach. We're resting yeah. about seven players. We're doing a Geelong. Yeah, yeah. We, are. we are. Big rest. Um, and, you know, that's fair enough. We've got a big finals campaign coming up, so can't wait for that. If you want to know what's in the spring, get into Rowan Jarman. Shut up, Dan. I have prepared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's Adla- a good then. <laughs> yeah. Adelaide United, anyone caught the start of their season? Nope. No? No? No one cares? Nope. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it has been very exciting. They have scored, I think, nine goals in two games and uh, beat Melbourne City on the weekend six nil. And uh, their their young, uh, um, I don't even I don't think he's actually a striker. I think he's more midfielder. Iran Kunda scored an absolute like booming free kick, which was super impressive. Um, all the rumours are that he's going to be picked up by Bayern Munich, which is you know one of the biggest clubs in the world. So. Adelaide should hopefully do pretty well out of that deal. Uh, Ange Postacoglu train just rolls on. Don't like Tottenham, but it's fun to see him keep winning. So Bozza does. Yeah, he does. My yeah. bandmate's from Tottenham. Really? Yeah, yeah right. Interesting does she way. support That means Spurs? my band is actually half from Tottenham. Yeah, true. Uh, I don't think she cares. No. <laughs> Look, my, my partner's a Man United fan, but he is loving the Ange yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, he's just loving it. He thinks it's amazing. Yeah, yeah I'm Liverpool, I just, uh, I, but I just can't help but, like, think it's fun watching them win and how much the English media were wrong Yeah, about him. So, yeah, Do you remember good. Rebecca Elmaloglu? Do I? That reminds me of Ange Postacoglu just because the name sounds <laughs> good. Every time I hear his name, I'm like, oh, she was a babe. Yeah, she's on Neighbours now. <laughs> Is she? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. You Neighbours fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been I'm a while. Bozza. You and Bozza. <laughs> it's been a while since <laughs> I've uh, had a, you know, watched Toadie. She's married, well, she's married to Toadie on, on oh the show now. Oh, my God. He what? is batting above his... Yeah. And you Dan thinks she's hot, and so isn't, isn't he just that big fat idiot? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, he's he is not fat, is he? No, anymore. Oh. He's, he was. Uh, Did he, he trim down a little bit? You oh. clearly haven't watched it in thirty years. I thought he was that real big guy. He's he was big. Once. Well, he was big, but he's he's grown out of he's grown into himself now. He's oh yeah, no, a, I'm fat. He's I a dad. Like he's he's not, a dad bod. I'm kind not of fat guy. shaming. I hope Toadie doesn't listen to this show. But I will tell you this. The last ever episode of Neighbours that happened when they cancelled Neighbours, in that end thing, Toadie mm. was getting married to not Rebecca Elmaloglu's character, but someone else. And then Amazon picked up Neighbours again and they were like, we're bringing it back. And everyone was like, but we just celebrated the end of Neighbours. And they were like, no, nah, we're bringing it back. So they all got everyone together. And for some reason, in the first week of the new Neighbours, Toadie married Rebecca Elmaloglu. How did they have what? the money to get Rebecca Postacoglu on? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> She's not that high in demand. I'm just trying ben. to tie it back to the soccer. I just want to get Ben's thoughts on all of this. I thought I was lost with the soccer talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, now anyway, moving further on. Further in the weeds. Uh, Someone explain it to me, please. The best thing, I've moved house just in the last couple of weeks down to mm. uh, Glenelg and we've got a cafe near us called Spellman Social and their egg and bacon roll is one of the best egg and bacon rolls I've ever eaten and I just wanted to put it in here. So okay. yeah, if anyone's down that way, just wants a nice sandwich, Never can't be bothered be. lining <laughs> up. Oh, you'll probably run into some of the boys and... Maybe. Down there, well, I, I thought I saw one of them. You there might the as well be at Strath. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> 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 it only took 15 minutes to get here. It's not too bad, actually. It's pretty good. Yeah. Footwear sacrificed at half price and equipment slashed to half price. Rowan Jarman's huge half price sale. Don't miss it. So you'd forgotten I had a contribution. Oh, here we so. go. Go on. Well, before <laughs> the thing, you were quite happy. You like anyone got anything oh, for this segment? Did now. you discuss in the car? No, no, oh. we came you separate. were at the table as well. No, I missed that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Not just Sam forgot I had a contribution. So, <laughs> um, I have one, I'll let you know. All right, so Friday night kids cricket. 
while you were as the good. So, well, you know, you, you think about, you know, going to watch the cricket. It's a Saturday. It's hot. Mm. Takes up your whole weekend. But this is like a 5.30 kickoff. Um, goes for a couple of hours. The sun's setting. Depending on where you're playing, you can grab a beer from the bar, just sit on the, the sideline. Mm. Okay. It's yeah, quite, quite, a, it's right. quite a good way to finish mm. your working week. Just, yeah. Where were you this last Friday? Oh, well, at the home of the mighty Strathalbyn Stallions. <laughs> Stallions! Stallions. <laughs> oh. It's weird that an under 10s team would be called the Stallions. Mm, that is a weird name. Oh, well, it's the club. I don't know if there's <laughs> a subgroup that they, they change it down for. Well, spe- speaking of mascots, I've got some I've got some mascot stats from Twitter. I, um, there's a guy who went through every uh, AFL or Australian Rules football club in Australia and mm. has has worked out what the mo- most popular mascots are. Oh yeah, should I do it now? Yeah. All right. What do you think? What do you think is the most popular mascot name? Tiger. Yep. Tigers. Yeah. Correct. Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, look at yeah. this. More fried chicken. Fried chicken. Yeah. yeah awesome. Thanks, thank mate. You. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Beautiful. Thanks, uh, thanks to Jake. He's just uh, dished us up, just pure fried chicken. We literally this time. are just getting no. served <laughs> tonight. <laughs> no <laughs> coleslaw this time. We've been pure told fried off chicken. The too garnish. Many, too <laughs> <much extra. laughs> uh, no, you are correct. Tigers is the uh, most common. I thought so. Uh, One hundred and sixteen clubs in Australia are called the Tigers. Uh, Seven point five percent of all clubs are called the Tigers. What do you reckon? Second. Oh, sharks. No, nah. it's a AFL mascot. Magpies. Yeah, correct. 88 clubs. Uh, and uh, also, just out of interest, Ben's old club, Glenorchy, are the Magpies. So, there's one. Uh, Bulldogs. How is my old third. club, Glenorchy? <laughs> oh, that's just the example <laughs> we Bulldogs put in there. So I they were funny. the wrong side of the, uh, what is it, the something curtain, the flannelette yeah, curtain. Yeah, the flannelette curtain. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How come Bulldogs are the only breed of dog that get a nickname? Why aren't there any scary. like staffies or rottweilers? Oh, true. They're not that yeah. scary, are they? Bulldogs mm. aren't. They're just ugly. Oh, rottweilers would be awesome. That's not a good one. Adelaide name. rottweilers. Uh. Yeah, get around them. <laughs> well, Bulldogs were third and the Eagles were fourth. The Crows, 14 clubs. They were 22nd. That's Funnily so enough, bad. one club ahead of, pa- of the power um, with 13. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting stats. Yeah, so I thought I'd bring that to the podcast. Anyway, moving on. Uh, moving house. This has to be one of the worst things ever. I know, Dan, you're moving this weekend. Yeah, it's moving house close. is literally one of the worst things you can do. Mm. It is just so painful. Yeah, I wish you the best of luck. Thank Dan you. never has to move again after this. Yeah, that's true. That's the benefit of buying a house. Oh, money bags bought a house. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, wouldn't yeah, call him that. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. Nah. <laughs> money bags. In the never. car, he was like, "Can I have some petrol money?" <laughs> <laughs> it's over for me, Sam. <laughs> no more luxuries. When were there ever any luxuries? Yeah, true. Yeah, that's this fair. Is yeah. Terrible. Well, if you <laughs> yeah. pushed a bit further out to Strath, oh, the disposable income's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Goodwin Per interview on SEN this week, uh, where they tried to, I guess, sort of steady the ship there at Melbourne um, and just made it look like they were uh, just trying to get their own heads above water there, really, more than the, the club or the players. So well, it was just good they got an independent interviewer in for, to do it with Gary Lyon. Yeah, Gary it? Lyon. So you imagine that was all keyed up, wasn't it? We'll do it, but we just want someone who's going to go soft on us. Yeah. Oh, I, don't, I wouldn't say he went that – he wasn't that soft. No, nah, but it was, he, all, it was such a self-serving interview, though. It obviously was it was. Yeah. I mean, I feel like – they all, I mean, they're damned if they do and they're damned if they don't at this point. Mm. Um, and Goodwin uh, carefully worded that he's no longer taking any drugs or, or no, something no, to that no, effect. Like, I do not take drugs. Yeah, do not. No more. <laughs> 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 Bloody hell, I was into one beforehand, allegedly. And Sorry. Another time he sort of talked about how I never have, but I don't know yeah. if that was while he's been at the club or mm. been at the coach or I don't know. Yeah. It was we all, all know you're lying, Goody. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. A little Allegedly bit of, I think lying. it was just a little bit of wiggle room in the way things were said. Mm. Speaking of Melbourne, my next bad is mm. the loophole that could see Joel Smith only missing a month for his uh, drugs charge, uh, which I, it just seems crazy to me. Why do we, when we have players that uh, do something wrong, it's almost like we're forced to do something drastic about it. Yeah, we always seem to be the example team. Like Stengel. Stengel got busted with a very small amount of drugs one night out and it was almost like we were forced to push him back to the sandfall and then he was basically forced to leave. So In our defence, that was a third strike for Stengel. Was it? Third? Yes. He'd had, he'd had he'd car accidents. Dri- drink oh, driving. I was going to say, I thought it was the yeah. drug strike. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no. No, that's fair. Yep. So in that respect, like, yep. you know... 
Yeah. That was a big one for yeah. him. But then it was Geelong's gain, obviously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, And that actually kind of annoyed me at the time because people were like, oh, the club should have supported him. It was like, well, we did through yeah. two other incidences and then the line has to be drawn somewhere. Yeah, yeah anyway. that was so frustrating, that whole... Yeah, yeah, when yeah. He went super. There. Um, but anyway, yeah, I just can't work out how... How that? Not that I necessarily care. Like I don't really care. Like, and if that's the new rule, then then okay. Honestly, I just can't believe how dumb he yeah, is. Yeah, I know. Like, I know. I understand that. Like, players, you know, do naughty things um, yeah. in the off season, and they they get on the coke, and you know, that's all well and good. Whatever. I'm I'm not judging. I do no. it too. <laughs> but why would you do it when you're like literally like a week away from yeah. a finals campaign? And, and like you're, you're an idiot. And you're a fringe player as well. Yeah. Like we know the AFL loves looking after all the top players. They're not going to, you know, if Paddy Cripps has probably been busted before or something, you know, maybe not him. But if that sort of ilk of player gets done, that's quickly swept under the rug. But if you're a fringe player, you're under the bus. So That's it. But Evan, he's still Speaking of out. fringe players, Elijah Hollands. Oh, yeah. Jesus. He's been in a good paddock, hasn't he? Yeah. Jesus. He looked real rough walking out of... Um, uh, whatever so he's, had his, the other so he's had his um, three year deal to Carlton cut down to one because yeah. of being found guilty like you, you would imagine that that was all pre-planned yeah yeah, yeah but still like that's pretty disappointing yeah. for a guy that our fans were going on about trying to get to our club mm-hmm. yeah. like we dodged a bullet there I think so uh, and, my, and I think the oh is this the worst thing nah look I'll put something in the middle I'm just gonna actually I probably should have said this earlier on it really annoys me when they, uh, whenever a human gets attacked in the ocean, that we suddenly have to find the shark and kill it. Oh, are we that? killing the shark? Uh, well, I don't know if we are. Oh, are well, we? Uh, they're hunting it. They're trying to find mm. it. Oh, that's well, ridiculous. It's got a taste for people now. Is that there? Is that the claim? Is oh, it? I don't know. I think it's retribution more than anything scientific. It's so pathetic. I think it's like a human gets attacked in the in the shark's home, being a shark, and then all of a sudden we need to try and hunt it down. Do you know what is sad about that? Is that most surfers understand that mm. they are they know what they're doing yeah. and. Even uh, one of the eyewitnesses of the attack kind of even said that, you know, we yeah. are entering their territory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we have to be careful of that and mm. things like this do happen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's pretty weird. Mm, it is. Anyway, that wasn't the, ba- the worst What's thing. What's the worst thing? Nah, like that was, uh, I just put him out of order. Oh. <laughs> Don't okay. worry, I'm on the ball. That's I do the have last another thing, but not the worst. I have another topic here. Can, do, can we do some general? Are we going into general? Yeah, right. sure. We haven't seen each other no. for ages, and no, we do what we want. I have a we bad. Oh, oh for God, he would come on. <laughs> I'll just keep it quick. Spring, <laughs> spring wind. I don't, I don't like spring wind. Spring oh, okay. wind. A bit that windy is down in Strath. Specific. It has been windy. Our bloody trampolines never in the same spot every morning. <laughs> it's, uh, I'll actually pay keeping, that then. Keeping mulch on a fruit tree. My God, it's, <laughs> it's a challenge. Keeping mulch on a fruit tree. What is that? <laughs> well, I'm um, not sure where to start. You, you might learn in Ben's <laughs> backyard. We'll talk about that yeah, later. Dan's All moving right. away from his forest at his current house. Mm. You got a garden at your new house? Yeah, but it's not as complicated. Yeah, okay. So. That's probably good. <laughs> ben can help But anyway, that. this is Ben's backyard material. We'll wait for that. Yeah. Uh, the thing I wanted to discuss was the AFL Reserves comp. And oh, yeah. Port, obviously, I, put, I sort of put this in my goods and bads and I wasn't really sure where to put it, but how Port in are pushing... Bin. Port are pushing so hard to be out of their sand full by 2025, which is, you know, must be a massive slap in the face to their long-term supporters. And it's, it's the death of the magpie. Like, how confusing would it be being a Port supporter? Like? 140 years they've been in the comp. And it, it's such a weird thing because they just seem to embrace their culture when it suits them. Mm. Like, so now that it suits them to be maybe away from the sand full and they'll be able to, like, you know, have a bit more flexibility and, mm. and, and such, they're just like, all right, nah. When don't you don't move, care about the black and white anymore. Yeah, when you move out of the sample, do you still count all those historic sample flags? <laughs> or do you no, you see, their argument now? is that Port Power is that team. Like, that's their argument. Mm. But it's not. It's not the Magpies, so. Mm. That's what I mean. Um, no, I know what you mean, and I agree with that. But I think <laughs> their argument is that Port Power is the Port Magpies. But we've brought, we've brought up the reserves comp here before. I think it can only be a good thing, can't it? Having all the reserves, all the te- Like, basically, we've got that giant VFL. Uh, at the moment. So it's only the Western Australian clubs and the South Australian clubs that don't play in that league. Mm. It just makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? And I think now that this is all happening, it's obviously getting closer. So hopefully in the next couple of years. I, think I mean, the nice it thing sounds is... sounds like it's not next year, but most likely the 2025. following year. Yeah, the right nice after. thing is, it being the Crows, it's a pretty clean cut because we're not meant to be in there. So no, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. but we're only like contracted until 2028 or something like that. So what happens there? Oh, well, I think the Sandville will just scrap that, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I reckon There'll be too. some... They'll work out who's disadvantaged and some sort of payout, I would have thought. Yeah. 
Definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, no one, no one wants the AFL listed teams to do well when they're in there. So, and then there's questionable yeah. whether the the teams even care about winning. No, yeah, you've got a lot of players that potentially leaving the club at the end of the year. They don't want to get injured. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, there's it just makes sense, and I'm th- I think it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was what I want to talk about. That so, what's uh, what's next on the agenda? I don't know. Well, we can talk a little bit about. Um, Theberton, I guess. I mean, that's like a little mm. bit closer to happening now. Um, apparently 10 trees is all it's going to take to maybe pilfer the whole idea, but sounds like things are on track, so that's nice. Oh, I hate headlines like that. It just <laughs> does my head in. Like I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not against, like I'm not one of those people who just want like chop down all the trees. Trees are obviously good, mm. but just for the sake of progress, worrying about some trees just does my head in. I hate it so much. It's not like it's deforestation here. It's 10 fucking trees. Yeah, it's not taking any oxygen away from these already oxygen thieves. And, (laughs) um, you know, are they going to miss that one tree that they've sat under no times? Probably not. It'll be fine. Yeah, I think they'll be okay. Uh, So you imagine that that's all just going ahead. I would say that that 10 tree thing was just a bit of sensationalism uh, coming from the appetizer. Proper use of the term oxygen thief. Yeah. Mm, well done, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm still not convinced it's the right spot, but there we go. Where's the right spot? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No one oh, knows. I like. I think Bowden would be better personally, but they've already. They've I think North Adelaide was the perfect spot. Well, no, it absolutely was. Yeah. How good would that have been, North Adelaide? There, but now they're spending a heap of money on the on the pool thing, aren't they? Mm-hmm. I saw that the other day. Does yeah. anyone go to that pool anymore? No, they do. It's pedos. I walk past <laughs> it. <laughs> So well, I don't anyone, know who, which ones are pedos, but I've seen people there. That was, just like in the clear, that was Dan who made that comment. <laughs> <laughs> you can just chuck the tech sound over there. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, what else is going on? Uh, yeah, what else is going on? Um, <laughs> we No, nah, well, not much is really happening in the... Like, like you said oh, earlier. Oh, James Borlase. James Borlase. He's a... We, okay, so we asked the AFL if we get an exemption and keep James on the <laughs> rookie good. list, and we were denied... Mm. Um, another team, <laughs> Melbourne, I think it was, <laughs> have uh, asked for a player to be left on their rookie list. They were approved of mm. that. Yeah. Now, people will argue that the player on their rookie list hasn't actually played any games and has been injured. Mm. Um, James Borlase played a total of four <laughs> AFL games and, and a total of maybe nine quarters of those football games. Yeah. Oh, and, and probably only one or two where his hands weren't on his head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the new Billy Frampton. Um, but, you know, a little bit, little bit unfair. It's, little it's bit. so dumb. The rookie list is such a stupid, like, setup. Like, how the clubs can turn around and put players that have played 300 games on the rookie yeah, list. Yeah, Melksham. On the, yeah. Like, what? He Eddie Betts was on the rookie list at one stage after he paid, like, 340 games. Like, yeah. it's just so dumb. And then they'd turn around and say, oh, no, nah, you can't put... Even we, though we, can, we, we can do it. And we can't forget the Hugh Greenwood, Gold Coast Sun yeah. delisting. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> That true. led to his move to North. And yeah. I'm a bit worried that James Borlase <laughs> might get an off, nah, sneaky offer. I don't think anyone's going to take it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that maybe. Would, I, do you know what? That could happen. I would find that funny. Yeah. I, like, I almost hope they do it. I think that could be pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Um. Anyway, uh, we have uh, committed to re-rocking James, but... These things do happen. Yeah. Now we're edging closer to draft night. Mm. Do you know anything about it yet, or do we still need to get Nuz in? Nah. When is it happening? Nuz <laughs> will come here, Wendy. Nuz yeah. will come yeah, here. Of course yeah. he will. Uh, it's happening at the end of the month, like twenty fourth, usually, like yeah. all around that sort of date. Um, okay. So a couple of weeks away at least. Uh, the, I've done a little bit of reading on on like the list, and obviously reading, you know, Kaltumi's setup. However much you believe Kaltumi, I think he's usually pretty well on the mark. Um, mm-hmm. He gets close. I've forgotten the guy's name. The tall, the tall um, defender guy, O'Sullivan, or yeah. O'Sullivan? There's, there's O'Sullivan, who's like a defendery player, and then there's um, Windsor, isn't it? There? Windsor, that's yeah. the one. I think he looks the most in- interesting to me. I think yeah. as like a bit of a, pro- almost like a bit of a project. Yeah. I always um, think about people talking about like the kids in the draft, like they know what they're talking about, and I reckon you'd probably find that only like two out of ten people actually know what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But everyone else just goes along. Oh yeah, we really want O'Sullivan. Yeah, but no one knows no. who's watching. Like oh, I reckon there that, is a few. I reckon that like Ricky Modra guy probably watches it. He watches a lot. Nuz yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, there is there is some guys out there that genuinely like that is their passion. Yeah, uh, and that's good. And I'm it glad. is good. But yeah. I think lots of other people jump on the bandwagon. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm one of them sometimes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, but 
I, I love draft night. Um, yeah. We could, we could maybe do, maybe we do draft night here. We could. Do, do a pod. Yeah, we got let me heap, check my schedule. We've got a heap of, heap of picks, potentially, whether that changes before draft night or not. I, well, think, I think it will. I think we're pa- going to pack, gonna yeah, package Yeah, I think we're going to package to move up, hopefully. Yeah, I just don't know who's going to want That's the problem. You need, it. you need a seller. Yeah. Mm. And I don't know if there's any sellers there. Not in that. Cause the well, they talk about Geelong or GWS yeah, being the Why would options. they want That's me? sort of eight or nine. It's not a massive leap. Well, GWS no, could. Maybe GWS. Yeah. But... Yeah, I don't know. That's the problem is that there's the, I think that the top end talent is very thin in this draft, so there's not going to be many sellers in that top 10. I think if we go up, it would be to try and get Sanders, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is he the... He's the Tassie, Tassie guy, guy yeah. that North like tried to get us. That's there. right. Um, yeah. Just give it to us because we need whatever we can get. Oh, God. Yeah. And how's them trying to get bloody the top three picks? <laughs> God, they, what, what, a stu- what a shit club. Anyway. Well, look. We will talk more thoroughly about this with Nuz, hopefully, yep. um, before that happens. Um, mm. At least Nuz had some actual knowledge, yeah. unlike any of us. <laughs> we have no idea what the hell is going on. Just uh, wait. Well, I think we've thrown up enough names to sound like we know. Something. Yeah, well, we've, now we've, we've ruined it. Yeah, the what's don't his know. name? Yeah. Sanders Sullivan. That that's selling it. Uh, yeah. Windsor there was no what's his name about Sanders. It was very strongly stated. <laughs> yeah, the Colonel and O'Sullivan Beach. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, the other news uh, that came out yesterday was Aaron Phillips re- um, retiring. So how ceremonious! Yeah, um, I, I watched her speech. <laughs> it was a bit of a tearjerker. Can we can we like her again? It, yeah, I think so. I think it was yeah. sad. It was sad for me that uh, her speech was in front of a bunch of port players. But yeah, and wearing the teal. Oh, it's just. I mean, that doesn't sit right with me. I get it, but it's sad. But um, anyway, you know, she'll forever be a Crows. Women's premiership player. So. Yes, I did like the uh, Crows FLW subtle dig at the uh, the social media, subtle digs at Port. So you know the social media they were mm. throwing out there. You know, here's a thread of like all the memories. Not very many <laughs> memories, but uh, Crows FLW clapped back with some uh, premiership medals yeah. and uh, Aaron holding the cup, which I loved. Good on yeah. you, Crowies. Mm. That's it. So well done, Aaron, on a amazing career. I'm sure you don't listen to our podcast, but... Probably not. Well um, also, <laughs> news today, Richard Douglas is mm. off to the Gold Coast Suns to mm. uh, as part of their development program, development coach. Where's he like been? That. Well, he's been with the Crows. Has he? Yeah. I thought yeah. it was with Glenelg. Mm. Oh, well, he's been working for the Crows, I think, doing something. Yeah. I don't know. Well, he was there that it's night. I played on the Oval. Just <laughs> another example of our... Um, Solid knowledge. (laughs) (laughs) uh, He's been doing something. (laughs) He's been sending us voice things. Give me a home among the gum trees with lots of plum trees. A dog or two and a barbecue for hours down the side. And veggies by the fence. All in Ben's backyard. (laughs) In Ben's backyard. Ben, it is spring. Spring has sprung. It has. Uh, it has. You already hate the wind, but I, I, uh, d- I do hate the wind. We need some gardening <laughs> tips because uh, it's already nearly the end of November. Or well, actually, it's November, not the end of November. It's November, yes. and we're already heading into summer. What we, do we do? We what have, do we do? Well, it's been a challenging start to spring. It's been quite dry over winter, so. Um, Really important, get that mulch down. Despite that wind, you've got to get your mulch over your, your trees and whatnot. So Dan's looking very confused about what the concept <laughs> of mulch? mulch is. <laughs> Can you tell me where you stand with knowing what I'm talking about, Dan? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, move on. Okay, so um, I'm going to assume most people know a bit more. Um, he's never heard of a band called Mulch, so he's confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it, if you haven't already, it's time to get in your summer crops. So your tomatoes, pumpkin, corn, cucumber, capsicum, it just list goes on. Now is the time. Oh. If you can keep the water up to it, um, all your warm crops, it is bumper time. So Not all of us excellent. can afford mammoth water bills like you out in Strath. I think um, it's that row of tanks that he's got. Yeah, it's the rainwater. I don't think that's going to break your bank compared um, to um, other things. Now, I did <laughs> bring up earlier with you, Ben, that I've had some topic. I was excited about Ben's backyard tonight mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. a good reason. And it's not it's not just about mulch. I'm sure that the mulch has been poured somewhere. 
<laughs> in this process I'm about to bring up. But we um, had to remove a cubby house in, out of the house that we, oh. we've been renting and then plant some grass where the cubby house used to stand mm-hmm. so that it doesn't look like just a big patch of dirt. Mm-hmm. Seed or ready-made turf? Ready-made turf. So I went into Crafer's Garden Centre, which my mate uh, Chody owns. Um, Love the Chode. Chode. Chody. Chody. <laughs> Chody. <laughs> Are you laughing at his name? Yeah, it's cool. uh, Anyway, so I drove up to Crafer's last Friday, picked up the grass, and uh, I said to Chody, is there anything I need to do to prepare this when I get home? And he's like, no, nah, no. Nah, Any chance you know what type of grass you got? Uh, some k- kikuyu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Yep. Is that what it's called? That's a Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> it's pronounced Ratogolia. <laughs> um, Is it not called Kikuyu? <laughs> Kikuyu. Uh, all right, anyway. <laughs> So we've got the kikuyu and Chody said, uh, you know, you know nah, you're fine, just roll it out into the spot. So I did that, went home, rolled it out. He's like, make sure you keep it really watered. Did you prepare the soil under it? Keep it really watered. So uh, <laughs> keep, kept it really watered. Um, you know, even laid some grass over the top of some other patches that needed clearly needed new grass. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, Jasmine's dad rings and goes, oh, I'll come and help you guys with the grass um, tomorrow. Uh, has Dan picked it up yet? Yeah, he picked it up on Friday. He's already laid it out. Oh, did he prepare the soil? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a reasonable question. <laughs> no, he, he just laid it. Down and oh, is it, so his, her dad goes, Oh, is it a bit lumpy? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just come around and rip it back up. And oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> 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 so he came around on Monday and ripped it all up. <laughs> Started again. So uh, So I learned a few things there. What were you thinking? Yeah, well, no, I honestly, what was Chody thinking? Telling you to advice. put it down. He oh. knows how stupid I am, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he should have not yeah. missed that <laughs> vital step. It's a, it's, a, now, it's a valuable lesson. Listeners will be glad to know that we are moving to a new house with uh, a more simple garden with grass already established. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got a lawn now. We'll uh, simply have Dan. to. Water and mo. Uh, it's that's not all you're going to need to do. I think you're going to need to get Ben's advice. Well, it just depends. Oh, well, I you might need to some mulch like education. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mulch, mulch your lawn, <laughs> 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 uh, unless you've got a, <laughs> a mulching mower. But that's about as close as we get. <laughs> 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 <Sorry>. oh, <laughs> Maybe so I should just stay away from the lawn. <laughs> so I might just get someone in. Well, so mov- <laughs> moving on from <laughs> turf tips from Dan. <laughs> um, <laughs> We've got a bit of an update in Ben's backyard. Oh, we have an expansion of the poultry zone. Oh, what? <laughs> no we, way. we have six more babies. Oh, oh, I thought you'd, you'd built on another room or something. No, oh, not you can no. do that in Strath. Well, that's there. You go. That's five of the six. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. <laughs> oh. They're very yeah. different colours. They've getting bi- they get they've gotten a lot bigger now. Um, Henry's reading books to them. Oh yes, well. They oh need yeah, some intellectual yeah. stimulation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, did, it fell asleep on his chin as See? he read to there it. So, oh. yeah. so that's Spot. pretty exciting. A couple of red anconas, um, two Easter eggers and two pecans. No oh. idea what the fuck any the of that No, is. I don't either. <laughs> Are they, he's still talking about chicken. <laughs> <laughs> so pecan, anyway, pecan um, pie? <laughs> Um, uh, we'll be making that too well in the terminal household, no. Um, Ben, I've just moved into a house that has patchy lawn. What should I do? Yeah, um, we'll have to have a look at why it's patchy, Sam. Can I get you some pre-rolled grass to roll out? (laughs) Is the ground compacted? Has it just been... um, Probably compacted. Yeah, yep, so... Probably aerating it, so coring the lawn would be a good start. Coring, okay. Now, do you know what... You can can go the budget route here and you can actually... This is what my friend at work told me because I was bitching about my lawn... You can get some wood and drive some nails into it and then strap them onto your feet and just walk that shit over uh, the lawn. Yeah, right. Oh, crap. And it would this make a very different difference to the aeration, I'd say. So, t- <laughs> so Generally, t- the cores are about a centimetre wide. You get you big get. nails, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Unless yeah, there was someone on your shoulders, I think the penetration <laughs> will be <laughs> minimal. He's a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I guess that's fair if he's going to call Tony that fat. Thing so. that, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I, in my defence, I am also fat, so it's okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> no, the um, the core, that's that thing with the like the like you can step on it. And it's got like little tubes on the end. Um, yeah, so there's yeah. different ones. You can get um, machines as well that go through and they yeah oh, go cool. in and get the plugs and is, uh, pull it out. This Honestly, is, this is a two by one lawn here. 
I feel yeah, like yeah, probably don't do that. <laughs> Between you, me, and Dan, we could probably hire all or go thirds all in all of this shit that we That's need true. and all do our lawns at the same That's time. That's true. All right, I'm going to Mitre Ten on Sunday, so I'll, uh, <laughs> okay, let's I'll let you know. Send me the bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to wind up this segment, that I'm sure we'll get many, many more chances to come on. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> Operation Orchard is in full go at Ooh. the moment, so I've oh. got my fruit trees in. Mulch occasionally on those fruit trees. If it's not the wind blowing it off, bloody <laughs> grown-up chickens got it. They escaped. I think the wind blew open their gate and they just oh. scratched the bejesus out of um, that mulch under my fruit trees. So that was Fuckers. somewhat frustrating. <laughs> Every time. The mulch. And they destroyed my new Callistamon hedge as well. Jeez, oh, chickens. Um, That's like that player on the AFLW team, Clearly Callistamon. Clearly Custerman. Yeah. That's what I said. <laughs> And, and there's been a lot of mental planning into my building the structure to, to create a fully enclosed netted orchard. Mm. So it's going to be 14 metres by 7 metres, so it's fairly big. Oh, Jesus, yeah, I'm, huge. Yeah. I'm not a naturally handy person, so it is a lot of thinking for me, but I yeah. think I'm going to achieve it. I'm going to use some big two-inch poly pipe for the arch, um, cement in some posts, Cement. This voice That's permanent. is yeah, getting deeper by the week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's old Mayor of Strath over here, yeah. all that bloody land. Here we'll you, be, here uh, you. Coming in for some <laughs> podcasts. Are you gonna start are you gonna start a little like, you know, curbside market store with all your fruit? Well, maybe, yeah. And well the song a was pantry? G- gum trees and plum trees and we are surrounded by gum trees and we've got a Satsuma and a <laughs> One of the original prunes that came to Handorf. So original prune? Yeah, it's a type of plum. A prune wow. is a dried plum. A Strath prune? No, well, it's a Handorf prune. It's one oh, of the sorry. heritage prunes. Han- <laughs> heritage prune. Fucking hell. <laughs> How much did that uh, cost you? And y- if you're wondering, I'm joking, I, I, do, <laughs> I do take this stuff very seriously. <laughs> no way. I wouldn't guess. All right, this segment's gone far too long. What's Here next? Here we grow. <laughs> 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 is that name of the pod? Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, right, let's do social media. Out of bound on the ball. Just before you start, I actually found my copy of that game, <laughs> that Nintendo oh, game. Really? Yeah, while I was packing the house up the other day. Yeah, right. Oh, really? I still have it. I haven't sort of blown the cartridge to know if it works, but. Mm. <laughs> Maybe Let's we can hook it, it up on this giant telly uh, one yeah, day. It looks so pixelated. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Jetty. Now, Jetty's on one this week. She is mad. Yeah. She's mad about the Ooh. VAFLW. But uh, what she has to say is, love the six omissions for the last minor round game. A big F you to the AFL for sending the team to play West Coast in the last minor round. You know what, Jetty, you're right. Because we played our first round away. Why are we playing our last round away? Two sandwiched, bookended, two away games. Mm. That's some bullshit. I'm, I'm with you, Jetty. Uh, sound familiar, she says. So what, what was that? Did you say? Oh, no, well, our away game was against Port at Norwood. Oh, right. Oh, was that the first game? It was. Oh, why did I think we were... Oh, I'm thinking of the men's probably. Yeah, the Perth game I'm is cooked, always mate. like, we always play like either West Coast or Free on the last round. It's stupid. Anyway, eight out of ten Victorian teams playing at home. Melbourne actually leaving Victoria in the last round three times this season. Mm. Yeah, it's not the best. I mean, I know they're playing like miles away from anywhere in Melbourne, but come on. Uh, Boise went to the Reds game instead of the Crowies North Clash because fuck Norwood Oval. <laughs> That's fair. I don't know how to s- pronounce this name. Aran Kunda? Iran Kunda, yeah. That's, Iran the Kunda? Was, that's the guy I was talking about earlier. He's a freak. Yeah, he's no, a I freak. I wasn't listening to you earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> love how settled the women's side is moving into the finals. Only one lass on the injury list this time of year is unheard of. Name everything after Aaron. Mm. Will it happen? Probably not, no, but it should. Doubt it. I think uh, Daisy Pierce will oh, get a few things named. As what's, well. the, what's the bet that Port Adelaide will name their best and fairest medal after Aaron yeah, Phillips? Yeah, probably. Mm hmm. Fucking idiots. All right, uh, Maddie, <laughs> <laughs> Maddie C asked, thoughts on uh, Tim Silver's Facebook Q&A? Now, did any of you tune in for that? No, you did though, didn't you? I actually didn't because oh. I was working and I forgot that it was on. Mm. Um, 
But I did get sent a few screenshots from the uh, Q&A. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I actually don't really like it when they do those Facebook Q&As because it feels like only like five or six questions get answered. Yeah. And I know it's, it is a, it's a hard process because, you know, they can't win either way. Like, you know, if they answer every question, people get, you know, a bit mad and it takes too long or if they don't, you know... There's obviously some questions Tim Silver ain't going to answer. But he did address uh, the fact that there would potentially be a new logo coming. Mm. It was watch this space. Mm. So... <laughs> did he go against we were onto the, something. Did he go know. against the NDA I when he said I think he might that? have. Uh, I don't know if Tim signed the NDA. Yeah. He's, but, um, he's probably allowed to. Maybe. I don't know. You heard it here first, folks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't uh, say that, Lauren. <laughs> it's a chance they heard it somewhere else before. When? I don't know. It's okay. Anyway, uh, he also um, was asked about a couple of other things that I forget. And he answered, <laughs> he answered the question. So, mm. um, oh, he, someone asked him about um, what they were requesting from the AFL in regards to the goal umpiring decision. Uh, and they have requested uh, better fixturing in terms of more Friday night games and also less regional travel. So, yep. Caro Wilson seems to think that we are going to be very pleased with the fixture release. Mm. And I think they're releasing it like She's never pretty been soon. Is it next week? It's next week, yeah. yeah. So, I guess we'll have an update on that hopefully by the next episode, if not the one after. Um, but, yeah, I, I appreciate the fact that the CEO will get online and answer some fan questions. And he was pretty, he was pretty giving with his answers and stuff like that so especially with the caliber of person that's usually on facebook well that's it yeah (laughs) Uh, oh jetty sent us another one she can't stop aflw finals venue heard norwood horrible especially if it's hot my money's on demons playing a friday night game (laughs) no doubt jetty no doubt i mean a friday night would be oh the demons playing not us yeah we we get the sunday arvo at three o'clock and uh maddie c also asked about um Matty Rahili's play, uh, replacement, which I think mm. Tim Silver said in that Q and A that um, they were working on it and would be announced fairly soon. Yeah, but, James um, Rahili. James Rahili, yeah, Rawls. You said Matty Rahili. Did I say that? Oh. Did I say James? I you said Matty. Oh. I didn't hear it. I've got Matty Nix on the brain. Clearly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that stubble at the B and F. I just thought I'd correct you before someone on Twitter does. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever. I'm I mean cooked. X. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> what was I going to say? Yeah, James Rahilly. Who's 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 a replacement? Mm. No oh. names have been thrown out there. Didn't you think it was going to be Scott Burns? Yeah, <laughs> that's why I posted that sleeping. That who's it, <laughs> but he's our defensive coach. So, yeah, if so someone Pods has to Adley. take on him. Um, What's Pod- Adley? Where's he? I don't know. Is he still kicking around? Someone will know. Mm. Mm. Not sure. Bryce Gibbs? No, oh, Jesus. <laughs> He's never going to work at the cruise. It <laughs> <laughs> would go to the baggers. No, I don't know. What about Tony Modra? No. <laughs> yeah, Tony. Uh, they, they could usually, do worse. They don't usually pick. Um, they don't usually pick forwards as forward coaches anyway, do they? No, so ben Hart. Keep away. Ben Hart. <laughs> Let's get him back. Well, it will be get interesting. Get him and Burton back. That'll be good. And Burton. Don Pike. Yeah, well, he's free, Don, isn't he? Big, uh, he's West Don's Coast a big now. Don now. Big mm. CEO man. He Ooh, is. Finally... Suit. He's going to get a suit and a tie. Yeah. He's finally gone full circle. Back he's going to gonna send everyone on a camp. Because he was big business, wasn't he, before going into coaching? So he's yeah, He no left football for a while I yeah. think, before coming into Crows. Yeah, so he's been in corporate world. But he won premierships at West Coast. Guess who else has been in corporate world? You. Matthew Nix. Oh, really? True. Mm. Tell us more. Oh, he was in finance, finance wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Anyway, yeah. just saying. What do you got over there? Georgie Pearl. Don't want the Lady Crow season to end, but truly think we're going to go all the way again. I feel like we're going to. We've just, just got the determination this year is yeah. really good. Like I said earlier, it's going to be tight, but we've definitely got the goods to get it done. Um, just uh, segueing out of a uh, friend of the pod, Kate, um, on her social media has been all over Australia. Mm. Airs rock and whatnot. Yeah, she's on a fabulous solo Uber driving route. trip. And if someone could ever post our story early, she might actually get on board. Yes. Me. Oh, you. I was yeah. thought you were looking at me for a second. <laughs> no, I was looking at you, but it was me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Daniel Altman, thoughts on mid-season trade? Lots of chat that it helps Vix more so due to relocation mid-year. Yeah, I, I think the mid-season trades 
going to happen. Uh, and, and I'm worried that it does favour Vic clubs as well as clubs at the top of the table uh, mm. getting players in, a little bit more, more room to move teams. I, I just feel like at the moment clubs are really good at exploiting whatever the AFL puts up. As yeah. we've seen with the not the um, crews, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other clubs. As we've seen with the picks and things like that, so I just can't help but think there's going to be a lot of these mid-season trades. We're not going to think it through, and the first few years for big clubs are just going to be an absolute free for all. There's going to be some clubs who clean up, and some clubs that really suffer from it. So, yeah, that's my thoughts. But I, I think it's it's just going to happen. Speaking of clubs cleaning up, and I know Ben doesn't like to talk about NBA on uh, or <laughs> other sports on this podcast. but So we're not going to? NBA <laughs> season started last week and uh, I don't know if you saw this um, Sam, but the Milwaukee Bucks have just brought in Damian Lillard, who's like arguably one of the best forwards in, mm. in NBA and he's che- teamed up with uh, Antetokounmpo. Mm. Is that how you say it? I just call him Giannis. And Tito Kumpu. <laughs> um, who's also one of the best. Yeah. So, and they've just brought him in, like, stolen him from yeah. the Trailblazers. Yeah. Or wherever he yeah. was. Oh. <laughs> I sound like I know what I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs> anyway, but, like, that's just an example of what could happen. Yeah. Um, and then some of those teams are just stacked mm. of stars. When there's other teams like my M- Memphis Grizzlies who, mm. you know. Their Where's Jar? Pl- their Where's best player got done for... Flashing a gun <laughs> twice. <laughs> See, where's he coming back? Well, he's got suspended for 12 games or something. Yeah. <laughs> and Ben are riveted. Yeah. And <laughs> needless I'm not, to say... I'm not questioning how exciting Ben's backyard is anymore. <laughs> <laughs> without that star player, without Jar Morant, yeah. uh, the Grizzlies are 0-5. and five. Yes. <laughs> so it's going well. So yeah. Ben, what kind of variety of tomatoes should I <laughs> <laughs> Well, Very funny humorous. you should say the um, Amish paste were really good last year. Oh, okay. Very tasty. Amish paste. Well, yes. That's a tomato <laughs> variety. Okay. Do you got anything else over there? No, that's it. We no, that's it. All thanks, right. thanks for everybody getting in touch, even though we've been yeah, out thanks. of action for a bit. We have, and um, there's not a lot going on in the Crows world apart from the women killing it. And mm. uh, It's tough to talk about when, <laughs> when we <go laughs> I reckon we've done so all right good. to pad this show out as long as it's been. Yeah. Well, we've, um, <laughs> Yeah, we love we, chatting. We've, yeah, we've done. I mean, the grass it. segment went for the longest. Yeah, yeah, it felt like it anyway. Anyway, <laughs> it is the final round of the I women. Think the grass segment lasted longer than your grass would have lasted. <laughs> 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 well, it got it. saved, luckily. <laughs> um, do we have any update on the AFLW fantasy? Oh, we do. Out. Oh, we do. No, no, no. Why, Why did you Lauren, that? I just forgot it existed. Yeah, so did I. I haven't touched it. And tipping. <laughs> Both of them. Okay, we'll just put a pause in there, Sam. No, no, he oh, Ben, it. you came back there for a bit. Ben, just oh, Sam, right. just cut off and finish. All right, so how All was right. that beer? Thanks, guys. So <laughs> thanks for joining us on uh, Here We Cry. Who's hosting this? Week. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Cali Connection brought to you by Anthony Kiedis. <laughs> Look, I am shocked at this ladder. I'm um, not. It is actually interesting, isn't it? Congratulations to uh, Collective Mids. Again. Um, who's Hendo from Discord. Uh, he has taken it out with. Didn't he um, win the other one? Eight wins and uh, one loss. Are you also Look forgetting the grand the final ball, mate, of the other one? Who's Who might have won that one? How did you win? <laughs> yes, Dan. <laughs> uh, I did forget. I blocked it out. Uh, so the f- there is finals in this, isn't there? Uh, well, when but we say finals, it's just the grand final of the top two. Oh, right. So it's... Um, is Ben still in it? Sla- oh, no, I was never close. It's uh, <laughs> Sleepy's Snags. Who's that? Uh, Who? That is Cameron S.? Cameron, I'm sorry, but and do we invite collect- you? Collective <laughs> Mids, um, which is, that's Hendo. So uh, they're in the grand final, but Hendo took it out with a percentage of 116.5 with 12,533 points. Four and only one loss on the board, Ben. Oh, actually, sorry, before I talk about Ben. No, I will talk about Ben. But, uh, Pontus Ping is fourth. We fourth on the ladder. Fourth in position, but I think you'll notice if you look at their second on total points. Yeah, no one cares, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so Slapey Snags is first with 12,996 and I've got 12,958. Uh, and for I'm everyone... I'm just going by the ladder and who's yeah, in number one, Ben. That's win loss. So it's funny yeah. how no one remembers how gallant North were against the Crows on the weekend. <laughs> but I think the biggest <laughs> shock of this fantasy <laughs> is um, our one-eyed giant, Alex Williams, well, has plummeted Would you down like the to ladder. know who beat him in the last round? Yes, please. Me. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Alex. Good I'm effort, sorry. though. It's um, longer than my <laughs> Yes, it is. And, and, and way more boring. And I know everyone's dying to know... 
But yes, I am. Dying is I correct. am ranked in the top thousand now. I've made oh, my way calm up. Calm down. Eight hundred and sixty something. I'm never doing AFLW fantasy again. No, neither. Didn't like it at all. Well, too hard. <laughs> you came eighth on the ladder there. Me? I was fourteenth. Yeah, you, Sam. Yeah, um, right. I beat Dan. Yeah. <laughs> who came in 16th. What a surprise. So love that Dan, for me. Dan, you, and you don't have anything else to be doing at the moment. <laughs> you should be all over this. <laughs> you said that with such dry wit. <laughs> I almost thought you were Ben. <laughs> anyway. Richard uh, Kingsmill. <laughs> thank, thanks, for jo- thanks for joining us in the AFLW fantasy because it was a little bit fun. Yeah. I felt like we were all on a bit more even playing field. Yeah, you except could. for... Even um, though Hen- Hendo kicked our ass yeah. again. yeah. <laughs> I felt like I was just well, back I'm to not on the bottom, so 10 years ago <laughs> I did nothing in the April normal one. No, yeah. you'll figure it out next year. Listen to all the podcasts that Ben listens to. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it is the hey, last... Be more, Ben. <laughs> it's the last round before finals this week against West Coast. We're resting basically half the team. Jess yep. Waterhouse is rested. Chelsea Randall's rested. Kira Mule is rested. Zoe Prowse is sick. Uh, and Hatchard. Hatchie's rested. Everyone's resting, so except for like Ebony Marinoff, because she just goes, oh. Is Danny Laidley in for North? I mean, West Coast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Danny Laidley's gone for the job. Don't yeah. know if she'll get oh. hired in a week. I, was, mm. I didn't really listen to that conversation earlier, but um, mm. no, good. Hopefully she gets yeah, the job. Yeah, she's interested in the job, so yeah. that'd be great. That she would be a real lift for them, I feel. Didn't do great when she coached North, though, so it may not be that good for West Coast. That's true. I feel like it could be better than what's happening now, though. Right? What, no coach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a coach who just wants to play against bad teams. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just play all the crap clubs, please? <laughs> anyway, oh, this so has good. been another episode of Hear Me Crow. Are mm. we going to predict our game against West Coast? We should. No, no, no we're all. Oh, no how one's going to say we're going to lose. Uh, yeah, we're definitely winning, but how much are we going to win by? 65. Well, the Ooh. thing is, the um, West Coast have won two games this year. Yeah, yeah. against who? Port. Yeah. yeah. Mighty Port. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they did beat. Essendon, who are fifth. Oh, right. Okay. In Melbourne. Yeah, right. So, so better travellers, would you say? Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> I think they do, their best player is one that's really seen as, you know, someone who's coming through the ranks is going to be... Neve w- Kelly. Well, <laughs> <best player. laughs> they kept still her. plays for their team <laughs> yeah. in Ella Roberts. She's seen as a really big hope for the future. And they've got... They don't have all terrible players. And yeah. they have had a couple of surprise wins. So... We're resting half our team. Mm, that's true. We it's do have a debutant um, this week. We do. Yeah, Brooke Smith. Welcome. Yep. And it is um, <laughs> it is an opportunity for us to uh, win the minor premiership as well if Melbourne l- lose against Brisbane. Yeah, we really mm. want Brisbane to do well at home. Need mm. them to uh, lift their game. They get that. We can get a grand final at Norwood. <laughs> Great. Yay. Yeah. That's so good. Mm. Can't wait for that sweltering day. Yeah. It'll just be suddenly 45 that day. I'm going to get one of those misting mm. fan things. <laughs> Sorry, just we, something yeah, that... that ends up I just realised something that should have gone in the bad segment just really quickly, but um, apparently the AFLW missed out on that, that cap where they were um, going to oh, get an extra yeah. game next year by a few thousand supporters or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I think Jetty made the point. It's funny how they did that, but didn't have the showdown in round one at Adelaide Oval where they could have got more people in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and they had a packed parade on that first game where you couldn't even see if you yeah. were, the kids couldn't see anything and all that kind of thing. Well, they're just not taking it seriously. Like, seriously, doesn't they just they? laugh in the face of it completely? Like, yeah. if you had it at the showdown and it was marketed as a, sorry, at the Adelaide Oval marketed as a showdown yeah. round one, you pr- surely you would have got more people than the parade. Mm. Mm. But no. Oh, and they had blockbusters like our game against GWS at 10 a.m. in the morning. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can't believe right. that wasn't you. Yeah. <laughs> a bigger crowd. There was crowd. about seven people there, wasn't yeah. there? <laughs> so, yeah, dog shit fixed stream. Yeah. Well, hopefully things improve next season. They won't. <laughs> anyway, go Crows. Go Crows. Uh, we'll be back next week, live from the loft. Live from the loft. Thanks, Torrance, Torrance Arms. Arms. Thanks so much for your hospitality. Appreciate you. Yes. Thanks to Jake. Thanks to the whole team, actually. Yeah, yeah everyone's bitch. been fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I it's feel good, like it's a good pub. People we should come here. We definitely are going to have some drop-in, want to talk on the pod. Oh, um, yeah. Staff you know. members. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think so too. And also, just for those playing at home, we are working our way up from Sam's basement to the top floor. Yeah. The <laughs> we really have worked our way up. And it's got, we? We've got a lot of space in here, don't we? It's quite we've nice. From Jason, yeah, Paul, I could, I could do a cartwheel over there. <laughs> if I didn't not, have not a broken wrist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. 
Mm, anyway. Times. It's very Thanks good. for having us. Thanks, uh, thanks, lads. See you later. Thanks, Lauren. Bye. Bye.